Welcome to the 2013 edition of our Mechanical Keyboard Buyer's Guide. We've done this before and we covered the basics, so in summary guys, if you don't want to check out the link to the other video, which is in the description, they are more comfortable, they are faster, they're more tactile, they are of course more expensive, so all of that is still true, but there are some new things going on in the market in general as well as from an availability at NCIX perspective that we really think you should probably be aware of. So last time around, Philco and Ducky keyboards were not yet available at NCIX, and what is their value add exactly. Think of these kinds of brands as kind of like a custom car or a subway sandwich. So instead of ordering the whole car or a whole sandwich, you instead pick uh, a chassis and a motor and combine them and then you get like a trim level on it or you like pick your type of bread and you're like, yeah, I want it toasted. No, I don't want it toasted. It's more like a customizability thing. So these four keyboards here, I'm going to lift them all up just to prove my point. Okay, these are all Ducky Zero keyboards. Look exactly the same, but underneath the keycaps are completely different Cherry MX switches. So they can have all four of the main Cherry MX switch types. So that's black, brown, blue, as well as red, and look completely the same. Now another example of how these keyboards can be different from each other is these two guys right here both have Cherry MX black switches, so these are two different Philco keyboards, but look at the layouts. So same keyboard, except Look at this, this one has a 10 keyless layout. So it's kind of how you, well, choose your own engine and chassis, choose your own size, choose your own switch type, and you'll have pretty much the perfect keyboard for you by customizing it in that way. Since our last guide, Logitech has thrown their hat into the mechanical keyboard race. However, not taking the approach of the whole custom car, custom sandwich sort of thing, they have one mechanical keyboard and only one. It uses Cherry MX Brown switches, it has O-rings on every single keycap, meaning it is a little bit quieter than other Cherry MX Brown keyboards, and because it's Logitech, you get Logitech's excellent gaming software as well as good integration with other Logitech products. You get programmable G keys, so it's a very fully featured keyboard in spite of being mechanical, but it's also quite expensive. Typically, keyboards like this were membrane only because of the expense of things like dedicated media keys and the programmability and all of that other stuff. Moving on, speaking of expensive keyboards, we've got the Matthias Quiet Pro. This is the only keyboard in today's video that does not use Cherry MX switches. In fact, it uses a completely different but also mechanical key switch that's very quiet but has a very different tactile feel compared to a Cherry MX switch. And it'll be up to the individual user whether they prefer that particular switch type. Next up, check this out. This is the Philco Manila. This uses a very unique 67 key US layout. So you're gonna find a lot of changes. Number one is the change in size. This is for people who don't have a lot of space or who want the ultimate portability or who just don't want any extras at all. It basically has a USB pass through and it has you know, your numbers and letters, and that is pretty much it. They've also made a couple of neat little changes. So delete is down here on the bottom right. It does have a short backspace, which unfortunately means I can't really use it because I have small hands, but there you have it. Definitely a cool little product. Now Corsair keyboards were kind of new last time around, but they've made some improvements. So this right here is the K95, which has a very, very cool lighting setup. So what you can actually do is you can program individual keys to be lit or not lit. So you could write your name and lights on the keyboard or whatever else. And it also has a responsive lighting system. So it will actually light up when you press it and then go away once you release it. They've still got program programmable keys, they've still got one of the better media key implementations that I've ever seen, and they've still got that awesome build quality with the solid aluminum backplate, but now you can get it in, haha, 
black, which is of course the new black, as opposed to just silver like the old K60 and K90. They've continued to expand their lineup of keyboards. Both of these still have Cherry MX Red switches, although new key switch types are coming soon. And this is the K65, which is a 10 keyless layout, so no programmable keys, no number pad, but that same Corsair distinctive feature set that you find on their other keyboards. Next up, we've got this, which is a very unique keyboard. This is the Durandolf from Max Keyboard. This is an eSport edition. And what's kind of neat about this guy right here is besides the very sort of gamer looking look of it and the full backlight, you've also got a mixture of switch types. Now I've seen this before on membrane keyboards, but rarely on mechanical keyboards. So this one right here uses Cherry MX Reds on the main typing areas and then Cherry MX Blacks around the periphery for things like shift, control, and even the number pad. So thank you guys for checking out the 2013 edition of NCIX's Mechanical Keyboard Buyer's Guide. There's more to come, however, so expect unboxings and overviews of an upcoming Toper keyboard, so that's a completely different key switch type, the Rocket Rios, as well as the Ducky Shine 3, so there will be more unpacking videos and all kinds of great stuff like that, and we're hoping to do mechanical keyboard updates on a yearly basis as well. So, thank you for checking out this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.